It was the worst industrial disaster in India's history. 30 years ago, on the night of December 2, 1984, plumes of poisonous gas leaked from an American-run chemical pesticides factory in the town of Bhopal in central India. That night, people were dying on the streets, scattered like garbage. Thousands of people, like Sanjay Yadav, lived right beside the plant and no warning was given. The consequences were catastrophic. I lost my sister that night. All night, we spent trying to find my family. My sister had inhaled a lot of gas. Her skin was peeling off and her eyes looked completely white. The disaster happened when water accidentally entered a methyl isocyanite storage tank, triggering an uncontrollable chemical reaction and blasting a cloud of toxic gases across nearby slums. Official estimates suggest some 5,000 people died. Campaigners say the real toll, including those who later succumbed to illness, was around 25,000. The effects of the incident are still felt acutely in Bhopal. They are also contested. Sanjay Yadav's sons, Varun and Aman, were born after the accident. They were both born disabled. Doctors at the Sambhavna clinic, who treat gas-affected people in Bhopal, say higher rates of children are born with abnormalities after the incident. 570,000 people have suffered some sort of health disorder related to the disaster, including cancer and neurological problems. 30 years on, people are still going to hospitals with gas-related illnesses. Satinath Sarangi is the managing trustee of the Samhavna Trust in Bhopal. Now, the, out of the 570,000 or so the people, the problem is that the government has take, put too many of them, 93% of them, in a category of just temporary injury. But if you look at the figures of the, from the hospital records, any year's record, even this year's, last year's record, you will find that there are more than 400,000 people who have been visiting the hospitals meant for gas-affected people. Despite their disabilities, Sanjay Yadav says his sons have been removed from the category of gas victims. At the moment, he does not receive ongoing support for his children. The plant that was the source of the Bhopal disaster is still not secure. 30 years on, its chemical waste contamination pits still remain, and the area has never been properly cleaned up. Even three kilometers from the factory, groundwater has been found contaminated with high levels of toxic chemicals. Jivan Shinde is also from the town and is a retired relief worker. He was in the original incident. Even today, there are 26 settlements behind the factory. The government has declared that the water there is poisonous and only some houses have hand pumps and tube wells. Some villages are getting clean water, but even now, I have witnessed many residents using the same polluted water. No organization has taken full responsibility for what happened in Bhopal. Local politicians bear some responsibility. There was a failure to secure the hazardous site, to provide good medical care for those in need and to provide other forms of compensation. But most obviously to blame was Union Carbide Corporation, the American company that owned and ran the plant. We have organized a technical team which uh, is being dispatched to... The facility was operating below the safety standards found in its sister plant in West Virginia, although Union Carbide argued that the accident was caused by sabotage rather than shoddy equipment. Long-standing Indian efforts to extradite and prosecute the CEO of the company failed. He died in September. Prosecutions did progress, though painfully slowly, against junior executives. In 1987, Union Carbide agreed to pay $470 million in compensation via the Indian government. That amount fell far short of original claims for $3 billion. Individuals received 25,000 rupees, the equivalent of about 400 US dollars. Hajira B is one of the victims who received compensation. During a period of six years, if one got 14,400 rupees and then 10,600 rupees, 
which total to 25,000, then how is that enough? If one goes to see a private doctor, then the doctor charged a fee of 100 rupees? Government hospitals were never reliable. If someone gets seriously sick and goes to a private doctor, then most of the money was spent on consultation fees. Dow Chemical, another American firm, eventually bought Union Carbide, although it claims that it bears no responsibility for earlier activities of its subsidiary. Campaigning groups such as Amnesty International say the opposite, arguing that the firm has a moral and perhaps legal duty to pay up fully for the costs of the disaster. If victims of Bhopal get justice, then the entire world will get justice, as no foreign company will have the courage to run its poisonous business in any city. Recently, Indian lawmakers introduced a liability law that holds foreign companies unambiguously responsible for accidents. While that law may be intended to protect people from future Bhopals, the reality is that environmental disasters caused by industry are affecting a growing number of Indians. By one estimate, air pollution from cars, industry, farmers who burn fields and more caused 627,000 premature deaths in 2010 alone. And the new law does little to help the survivors of Bhopal whose lives have been permanently altered by the tragedy. My children just sit all day and watch TV. What else can they do? They don't go to school. They just stay at home and kill time. But in response to criticism, the Indian government recently announced that it will revise the number of deaths and injuries, plus expand compensations to victims. Yadav's family may get another chance. But rupees alone will not undo the damage that has been done to the community of Bhopal. The Economist.